Hello everybody. The title of this lecture is What is Drawing? We're going to talk about what drawings are and some of the essential vocabulary terms that are associated with making drawings. Betty Edwards is the author of a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain and she says, Drawing is a curious process, so intertwined with seeing that the two can hardly be separated. The ability to draw depends on one's ability to see the way an artist sees. This kind of seeing is very specific and very different from the ways we ordinarily use vision to navigate our lives. For our first project, we're going to focus on this very thing, learning how to see the way that an artist sees and making a drawing. Some of the vocabulary terms, a drawing is an image on a surface, often this is paper, made with media such as ink, graphite, chalk, charcoal, or crayon. A line is the path of a tool across a surface that contrasts in value from its surroundings. And value is the relative lightness or darkness of a color. What is a line? The path of a moving point made by a tool, instrument, or medium as it moves across an area is how we define a line within the art world. A line is usually made visible because it contrasts in value with its surroundings. So this means that a line can be either lighter or darker than the space around it. Lines can be two-dimensional, such as a graphite line on a piece of paper, or three-dimensional like string, wire, tubes, solid rods, etc. When we think about line, there are some physical characteristics that we use to describe lines. The measure of a line is the length and width of the line. The type of line, it can be straight, curved, or angular, for example. The direction of the line can be diagonal, vertical, horizontal, and everything in between. The location is where the line is located within the picture plane itself. And then the character is the visual surface quality related to the medium with which the line was created. So a line made by a crayon is very different from a line that might be made by a Sharpie marker. When you are making lines, you can think about the speed, how quickly or how slowly you use your tool to make your line, the pressure, how hard or lightly you touch the surface of the paper with your tool, the handling. Um, so for example, if you hold your pencil very close to the graphite, you will get a much different line than if you hold the pencil close to the end of the stick. The tools themselves all create different lines, as we've discussed, and then the process. You can create lines by adding lines to a piece of paper. You can also subtract lines from a form by gouging or removing some piece of the surface. Value, as we discussed, is the relative lightness or darkness of a color. So what that means is when you are looking at a black and white photograph, all of the shades of gray help determine the different planes and textures of a form. In this photograph from 1939 of a cabbage leaf by the American photographer Edward Weston, we can see the infinite shades of gray help create the veins of this form um, and give it volume. This is a value scale. So you see on one side we have white and on the other side we have black. Each of the other steps show how the artist is moving from one value to the next in equal measure. When you are working with physical objects and a realistic drawing and you have a light source, there are other terminology that's useful for you to also know. The highlight might be where the light reflects directly off of the object. Then there is the midtone, the core shadow on the object itself, and on the underbelly of the object, there is reflected light. Notice on the surface, the cast shadow always connects to the object itself. Now let's take a look at some drawings. 
This drawing might look familiar to some of you. This is Vincent van Gogh's The Starry Night. It is ink on paper and it was created in 1889 in preparation for the painting that lives at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. You can see that he has used calligraphic lines to create a swirling and very emotional scene. This image of the landscape does not appear highly realistic. This is Van Gogh's subjective interpretation of the scene. This drawing by French artist Henri Matisse, Marguerite in Three Poses from 1906, also uses a very fluid style of drawing. Matisse's hand is quite loose, but this drawing is very different from the very labored surface of Van Gogh's Starry Night. If you look closely, you will see all three versions of Marguerite on the picture plane. This is an abstract drawing made by the American artist Georgia O'Keeffe titled Number 16 Special. O'Keeffe created this work using charcoal on paper. Even though the subject matter is abstract, when we look at this drawing, we cannot name the thing it is a drawing of, she's used different values to create the feeling of volume and mass in this work. By contrast, this is Ellsworth Kelly's Briar from 1963. Kelly has edited out most of the information of this subject. We see the silhouette of the briar, and that's about it in this particular work. There's no value. It is a simple contour line drawing of the subject. This is Homeworker by German artist Katja Kolliewitz. This 1921 charcoal on paper drawing was made at a time when many artists were more interested in abstraction. But here we see Kolliewitz's firm belief in portraiture as a vehicle to express emotion. This lithograph by artist M.C. Escher is titled Hand with Reflecting Sphere and it was made in 1935. Notice the detail of the hand in the foreground of this composition. It appears quite lifelike and was created with great precision and care. And finally, this surrealist work by the Spanish artist Juan Miro was created in 1952. This work may appear quite childlike in nature, echoing the core beliefs of surrealism to communicate something of the artist's inner subconscious. As we've seen in this short presentation, drawings can be made using a variety of different media, from charcoal to ink to graphite. The ways that artists have used these different materials, and perhaps the medium itself, often contributes to how a viewer can interpret the work.